October 13th, 1917, Moscow. Maria Alexandrovich, a young Russian noble lady, was teaching religion to a group of 200 children in the church of the Iberian Virgin. And suddenly there was a distraction. Horsemen entered the front door, down the middle aisle, vaulted the communion rail, destroyed the icons, the statuary, the altar, and then attacked the children, killing many of them. Maria Alexandrovich ran out of the church screaming. She knew that there was an imminent revolution by the communists, and she went to Lenin, whom she knew, and she said, a most terrible thing has happened. I was teaching catechism to my children. Horsemen came in, charged them, and killed some of them. Lenin said, I know it. I sent them. One of the events that heralded at the beginning of the terrible communist revolution that has since harassed the world. Rome, October 13th, 1917. The same hour, midday. Church bells are ringing all through the city. It's a joyful event. A bishop was being consecrated. His name, Eugenio Pacelli. A man who then was not very well known, but who one day would come face to face with this great revolutionary force and would become the greatest spiritual force in the world against him. After his consecration on that 13th day of October, 1917, he went to Munich. At that particular time, the communists were very strong. They were under the leadership in Munich of Karl Liebknecht, and then one of those curious women that communism spawned. Rosa Luxemburg. And an order went out to kill 325 so-called enemies. And one of them was this same Archbishop Eugenio Pacelli. The commander of the Southern Communist Army, whose name was Eiler, Brother Seiler, and his aide-de-camp, Rongratz, brought in some soldiers with hand grenades Siler himself was armed. They got into the house by a kind of a ruse, and they hid behind a curtain, waiting for the footfall of this man of whom we're speaking. And as he walked down the corridor, Siler was hiding behind a curtain. And he threw out his gun to shoot him, and the gun struck the pectoral cross on his breast, fell to the floor. Archbishop Pacelli reached over and picked it up, handed it back to Siler. Said, here is your gun. Kill him if you wish. I am only interested in the souls of my people. Siler and Bron Grants went back and they were unable to explain why they did not get their man. They could not explain why they were haunted by that lean figure. There was only one thing they did know. And that was that from that time on, that man would be afraid of absolutely nothing in all the world. And that man became Pius XII. And that pectoral cross that he was wearing that night, I am wearing now. Pius XII, he gave it to his esteemed friend, his eminence Cardinal Spellman, who this evening kindly gave it to me when I told him I wished to speak of this incident. October 13th, 1917, there's a little village in Fatima where three little children, Maria, Asinta, and Francis, 
were gathered expecting a revelation. They had said that Mary, the mother of God, had appeared to them. It was not surprising, of course, if she had. It might very well have been. The Lord came through her. Through her, he worked his first miracle. And then from the cross, he commended us all to her with his kind words, Behold thy mother. The children said that the lady had appeared to her before. Appeared to them before on the 13th of April, in May, and June, July, 19th of August, and the 13th of September. And in the course of the revelation, something very interesting was said, which goes to show there's something more important in this world than politics. It was said by the lady that this world war will end in a little over another year. Now remember the date, October 13th, 1917. We went to war that year on Good Friday, our country. The war did end in a little over another year, on the 11th of November, 1918. Then the lady told the children to tell the world that there would come a great era of peace to the world if the world would only return to God. And Russia would be converted. But, she said, if the world does not return to God, at the close of the next pontificate, that is to say in the year 1936, there will be the beginnings of a second world war in Spain. So evidently heaven regarded that civil war as the beginning of World War II. And then she said, but to prevent it, I ask that men do penance and prayer and return again to God. If they do not do penance, there will come World War II, which will be more terrible than World War I. Nations will be destroyed, cities blotted out, the good will suffer persecution, Russia will spread its errors and persecution throughout the world, and the Holy Father himself will suffer much. Then she gave a word of hope, but in the end, God will triumph. The Second World War need not have come. It was unnecessary. Wars are not just made by politics. Wars are crises and judgments that come upon us because of the way we live. But there had to be some sign that this revelation was true. And 70,000 people gathered at Fatima this particular day with the children. Now what is interesting is that most of them were unbelievers. Portugal in those days was anarchistic, communistic, atheistic, anti-clerical. They came out of curiosity. Some of them doubted, most of them doubted that anything would happen, but the children said that the lady told them that there would be a great miracle, which would be a proof that she had actually appeared. And the proof was what was called the miracle of the sun. 